Fancy. Um, Shalom, what you say? I only said uh, uh, Shalom back to you. Peace be with you. Same to you, Aki. How you doing? You doing all right today? I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. Real well. Thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we begin Jasher chapter 23 or 33, my fault. We're getting good work. One of my favorite chapters in Jasher is coming up. I'm going to tell y'all when we get there. We're close to it, though. Hallelujah. Um, uh, we just thank the Father as we humble our hearts and prepare our minds or prepare our hearts and just humble our being to step into the throne room of the Creator. Um, the Father, our Father, the the, the, the supreme authority of Yashara. Uh, we just say thank you, Abba Yah, for continuing to bless and to lead us, to guide us, and to show us the correct way forward. Uh, for always uh, being there for us in our tough times, Abba Yah, for giving us the eyes to see and the ears to hear, the hearts to discern the matters of the day, to know what 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 is good for the body and what to stay away from. Um, uh, to humble us when we need to be humble um, and to give us the correct focus when we fall off the path to get back right and to keep our hand on the plow. Um, I just pray, Abba Yah, that you bless everybody on the call as you see fit and if it be your will. Um, nothing more than Shalom, Abba Yah. I pray that Aura and her, and her family can find Shalom as they're transitioning to move into a different stage in life. Um, same with Lauren and Patrick and Obadiah, Abba, Yah, we just pray that your shalom be up on us all. Um, as only you can give us, Father Yah, uh, and we know that in that shalom is a blessing. Um, we thank you for opening up your word to us. I pray that your Ruach HaKodesh is over to reading tonight and that whatever it is that, that you see fit for us to, to um, take, um, to store and to hold on to from the reading, um, that helps build us up to be better vessels, functioning vessels for your use and your tabernacle as you see fit, uh, as you pour into us, Father Yah. Um, I pray that whatever we read tonight will help us to better understand that pouring into that you do. Um, and to just guide us as we move forward in this land of sin, this time of darkness and confusion. Uh, we pray that you send the light to guide us, but you also strengthen us in your character and your likeness so that we can also be a light to those whom you choose to put us in front of in the name of yahushua hamashiach we pray hallelujah 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 so <clears throat> yeah or chapter 33 we know last time um You know, last time that uh, Jacob wrestled with, and said a man he wrestled with as an angel, but I believe that that was a Mashiach. We, we'll probably see that again somewhere as we move forward. Um, he finally met Esau. Yah sent the angels before him, and Esau humbled himself and took the gift and kissed his brother, and he was cool for a time, but that ain't going to last long. But Yah made it where he was cool for a time, and Jacob is headed home to see his father. He's been gone 20 years. He ain't seen his father or his mother. Um, and he's headed home to see now. Hallelujah. Um, and it ended, chapter 32 ended with, um, it says, and Esau hearkened to the voice of Jacob, and Esau returned with the 400 men that were with him on their road to Seir. And Jacob and all belonging to him went that day as far as the extremity of the land of Canaan and its border. And he remained there some time. So Esau was trying to get him to come to Seir with him. And he like, yeah, nah. We're going to follow you. But when Esau went up there and went home, he went. He kind of took a detour like, no, nah, I got to go to my father. Which is what Yah told him at, in Laban's house. He said, it's time for you to go home and see your father. It's time to go see Yitzchak. Um, so in Joshua chapter 33, it starts with, an, and in some time after Yacob went away from the borders of the land, and he came to the land of Shalem, that is the city of Shechem. Let's see. Shechem. Um, 
Check out the neck between the shoulders as the place of burdens. The spur of a heel. Okay, that's kind of what Shechem breaks down to. But uh, <clears throat> he said he came to the land of Shalem, that is the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, and he rested in front of the city. And he bought a parcel of field which was there from the children of Hamor the people of the land for five shekels. So he bought some land, which he going to need a big piece of land because remember, he leaving with a bunch of cattle, a lot of servants. It's a big group of people with Yacob. And Yacob there built himself a house and he pitched his tent there and he made booths for his cattle. Therefore, he called the name of that place Sukkot. So he made booths and he called the name of the place Sukkot. And we understand Sukkot, the feast day, is about the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths, some people will call it. Um, and Yacob remained in Sukkot a year and six months. So 18 months, <laughs> as they would say. He was there for 18 months. At that time, some of the women of the inhabitants of the land went to the city of Shechem to dance and rejoice with the daughters of the people of the city. And when they went forth, then Rachel and Leah, the wives of Yacob, with their families, also went to behold the rejoicing of the daughters of the city. So it's saying here that uh, Yacob's wives went to see what was going on with the daughters of the city to dance and rejoice as well, which is a little odd to me, but we'll keep moving. And Dinah, the daughter of Yacob, which was, I believe she's Leah's daughter, also went along with them and saw the daughters of the city. And they remained there before these daughters while while they remained there before these daughters, while all the people of the city were standing by them to behold their rejoicing. And all the great people of the city were there. So you had the who's who of the city out, the king, the princes, the rich, the powerful, you know. Um what kind of feast what kind of feast bring out all the people when they be dancing? I don't know the uh uh, what's the name of that 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 little fest they do that be worldwide now? The um, Citizens United or whatever y'all know what I'm talking about? Where they be having them concerts all over the globe the same day, and it be like all these dignitaries from everywhere. It's the the, the United Citizens Award. Uh, it's not a war, but it's like the United Citizens Feast. It be on TV. It be on like CNN and uh, Fox and all of the news networks be carrying it. But it's kind of remind me of that. Like Monty Girl. Like who? Mardi Gras. Yes, but on a worldwide scale. I, the, what I'm thinking about is a worldwide thing. Uh -huh. but that is that also. Any type of feast like that, yeah, that draws out the who's who of an area. Hallelujah. Uh, it's saying, Dinah, the daughter of Yacob, also went along with them and saw the daughters of the city, and they remained there before these daughters while all the people of the city were standing by them to behold their rejoicing. So they saw the, the daughters dancing and rejoicing. I guess this does is a little bit more Mardi Gras because considering where they're at and the people that's there, um, this probably is a, a, a almost like a carnival type of setting too. Um, and all the great people of the city were there. And Shechem, the son of Hamor, the prince of the land, was also standing there to see them. And Shechem beheld Dinah, the daughter of Yacob, sitting with her mother before the daughters of the city. Excuse me. And the damsel pleased him greatly. And he there asked his friends and his people saying, whose daughter is that sitting amongst the, the women whom I do not know in this city? And they said unto him, surely this is the daughter of Jacob, the son of Yitzchak, the Hebrew. That was interesting that they had Hebrew there. It's also interesting. They knew, they acknowledged it. Like we, that's, 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 that's one of Jacob people. Um, and if they know it, considering how Abraham and Yitzchak and Jacob knew, um, uh, not as much Jacob, but definitely Abraham and Yitzchak, I'm sure that was passed on with some respect. Like, yeah, you know, don't be, don't be playing with that girl. That's such and such family. He said, Yitzchak, a Hebrew who has dwelt in this city for some time. 
And when it was reported that the daughters of the land were going forth to rejoice, she went with her mother and maid servants to sit amongst them, as thou see. And Shechem beheld Dinah, the daughter of Yacob, and when he looked at her, his soul became fixed upon Dinah. And he sent and had her taken by force. He was five. And Dinah came to the house of Shechem, and he seized her forcibly and lay with her and humbled her, meaning he took her virginity. Basically, he raped her <laughs> forcibly, it say. And he loved her exceedingly and placed her in his house. So first thing is, we've seen this multiple times with Israelites where they didn't try to take these wives by, four, uh, um, by force, right? And Shechem, fully aware of who these people are, um, and I'm sure if they know an Isaac, they, they elders know of Abraham, and not only do they know of him, they have the utmost respect for him because everybody did. Um, and yet, when he looked at her, his soul became fixed up on her, which was lust, really. He got the lusting after her, which was probably the custom of the land. Remember, he asked who was his girl in the city. I don't know. And being the prince, this is probably how he was moving around already. I'm the prince of the city. I'm the king's son. You know, we do what we want to do type of deal. Um, I can kind of see that being at, at play here as well. Um, and he had her taken by force. Mind you, she up there with a bunch of women, so they ain't put up much fight with no guards or his his whatever type of troop he's with that he had come take her. Um, like I say, it was a little interesting that they would be going into this Gentile city to see um, this dancing and this 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 festival really that they were having. Um, kind of shows how Rachel and Leah even though we know Leah's a lot more aligned with Yah and closer to what Yacol believes than Rachel, um, it, it just kind of shows that they were still kind of looking back to um, what they people, what their own people's done been on as well uh, to go see this. They probably was, it was probably feasts like this back where they was from with Laban um, and all of that, as we seen with, with Yacol married, uh, tried to marry Rachel, but was given Leah. They threw a big feast for him there. And all of the neighbors came um, and it didn't seem like something that was uncommon to be done. So I believe both of them possibly were kind of looking back into what it used to be. This might have reminded them of something that went on back at home. Um, but we see this went the wrong way. Uh, and like I say, dude seized her and raped her um, and which he was foul. Like, and we're, you, I'm sure y'all know this story, but. That's another thing that you hear amongst some Israelites in this awakening that I've heard some of them try to defend, like the Bible defends rape. Uh, and we're about to see from this story, this is one of the main stories where you're, we are about to see that that is a lie. And um, in my opinion, it's one of the worst sins that a person can commit. Any anything anybody want to add? Any comments? Anything you want to add to this so far? It's on you, Lauren. Shalom. Oh, shalom. I want I wanted to say that um, the uh, the son of Hamor he was a Hivite, mm -hmm. and the Hivites was the same people that was in the Book of Joshua. It was one of the seven groups that was in the land of Canaan. And what's funny is like um. They later on, like they're horrible, like because they went around for a while, because they're all the way in Joshua, um, their stories, and they were basically with the Gibeonites, mm -hmm. the Gibeonites, and um, it also I think they were with the Amorites as well. Yep, and they remained in Gibeon. the The remains of Gibeon are located in the southern portion of Palestinian village. But they were together, those few people, and they I guess they were very wicked. But it's just funny because they he's a Hivite. I was looking at that. It's in Genesis that it speaks about it. Genesis 34, uh, verse 2, when he says, And when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Hivite prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And it's so clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spoke kindly unto the damsel after he raped her. Mm -hmm. 
like after he did. And you know, as you see in Genesis 34, it does not say that she's with Rachel and Leah. Uh, and I've heard people tell this story from the Genesis standpoint. It's almost like she just done wandered off by herself. But we see from Jasher, she was with uh, the maids and it's not like it's a group of women went to see this. She didn't just like wander down here by herself. You are correct. He's a hiv he he is a hivite. Hallelujah. And after he did all this, he told Shechem, speak unto his father. Hey, he spoke to his father and told him to give me this damsel to wife. And Yacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Yacob held his peace until they were come. So that's in Genesis, and that's what we're about to see. Um, and it's a lesson to be learned in this. It's a few lessons. And we'll we'll get to it. Anybody else got anything they want to add before we move on? And we're gonna learn. So I believe it's a it's a very important lesson to be learned here. A, you don't play with the daughters of Zion. Real talk. And the crazy thing I think about because you hear this a lot um, from the daughters of Zion, like they're the most disrespected, they're the most unprotected, and in a lot of cases that's true. Um, but today, I think that's by design because of where our people have fallen to, um, our men first and foremost, but now even our women has fallen into a place of of just continual sin, really. Um, with that being said, part of what I took from this story is, is as we continue to build um, our relationship with the father back right, you can't play with the daughters of Zion. Um, and that's one of the things I see the crazy thing we were talking about some of these different groups earlier uh, you still hear about this type of behavior in some type of senses I remember uh, with that group who moved to Israel you had rumors of women coming out of there saying that different people had not done things to, uh, right amongst what we would call the awakening to them you hear this type of stuff about some of these other groups and the leaders and how they be taking these wives and 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 just reckless behavior, not just rape, but reckless behavior towards the daughters of Zion. Um, and I think it's a point to be made in that, and we'll get to it as we move forward. Verse 12. <clears throat> Anybody want to read verse 12? Read a couple of verses down. I'll read. <clears throat> hey. Hallelujah. And they came and told the thing unto Yaakov. And when Yaakov heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter Dinah, Yaakov sent 12 of his servants to fetch Dinah from the house of Shechem. And they went and came to the house of Shechem to take away Dinah from there. Now, interesting, as we just first, as you start, he sent 12 servants to go get her first because Jacob knowing as Genesis told us his sons in the field and Jacob not being a fool knowing his children, he probably knowing if Yehuda and them come back here and this is what's being spoke of right here and she's not here, this is probably going to go left. <laughs> so let me send these servants to get her before they get here. Go ahead. And the servants of Yaakov. No, right came, here. Verse 13. I'm sorry. Okay. And when they came, uh, Shechem uh, went out to them with his men and drove them from his house. Mm. And he would not suffer them to come before Dinah. But Shechem was sitting with Dinah, kissing and embracing her before their eyes basically holding her hostage so he, the, this was okay. this was his chance to do at least to try to begin to try to make this right okay here go the servants go with your father tell him i want to marry you or whatever he just holding her hostage on this my city i'm the prince y'all in our land yeah we know who isaac is so what uh also you didn't had esau around these people so ain't no telling how he didn't been speaking about your cold there also, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me shut this door.
yeah, you, we also have to consider we know Esau been through here and how he feels. So they may even know the dynamic of all of that. And more than likely, they feeling Esau, they probably scared of him. He's like we'd stay. Esau done slayed Nimrod. He think he tough. You know, just trying to put the picture in full view. Because what he's doing right there is blatant disrespect. And to be as disrespectful as he's been, um, it's kind of like a um, – it kind of reminds me of, of maybe he's been influenced by that type of talk. But they ran the servants away as he was kissing and embracing her before them, basically holding her hostage. Verse 14. And the servants of Yacob came back and told him, saying, when we came, he and his men drove us away. And thus did Shechem uh, to, to uh, do unto Dinah before our eyes. And Yoko knew, moreover, that Shishim had defiled his daughter, but he said nothing. And his sons were feeding his cattle in the field, and Yoko remained silent till their return. So once he runs these servants back, Yoko like, okay, I know what time it is now. Go ahead. And before his sons came home, Yoko sent two maidens from his servant's daughters to take care of Dinah in the house of Shechem and to re remain with her. And Shechem sent uh, three of his friends to his father, Hamor, the son of Chedin Kim, the son of Pierre, saying, get me this damsel for a wife. And Hamor, the son of Shedekim, the Havite, uh, came to the house of Shechem, his son, and he sat before him. And Hamor said unto his son, Shechem, is there then no woman amongst the daughters of our people that you will uh, take a, a, a Hebrew woman? who is not of thy people? And Shechem said unto him, her only must thou get for me, for she is delightful in my sight. And Hamor did according to the word of his son, for he, had, he was greatly beloved by him. And Hamor uh, sent forth uh, to Yoko to, to commune with him concerning this matter. And when he had gone from the house of his son, Shechem, before he came to Yaakov to speak unto him, behold, the sons of Yaakov had come from the field. As soon as they heard the thing that Shechem, the son of Hamor, had done, and the men were very much grieved concerning their sister, and they all came home fired with anger before the time of gathering in the cattle. <clears throat> and they came and said before their father, and they spoke unto him, <clears throat> kindled with wrath, saying, Surely death is due to this man and to his household, because the Lord, uh, Yah, of the whole uh, world commanded Noah and his children that man shall never rob nor commit adultery. Now, behold, Shechem has both ravished and committed fornication with our sister, and not one of all the people of the city spoke a word to him. You can stop right there. So we see... <laughs> Hamar, first off, or Hamor is like, you don't want to take nothing from your own people? Why you want to take this Hebrew? And being his father and the king, he knowing, like, I would heard a lot of stories about Abraham and, and Yitzchak. And uh, even we know Abimelech, and it talked about when Abraham died, all these people came, all these kings and princes. Uh, Hamar's father or whoever was king and wherever they're at before was probably there. It's a good chance. So in his mind, he like, yeah, this ain't going to be right. 
the father know that. He trying to talk him out of it. Send that girl back. Right? That's first. Second, he listened to his son. Okay, I'm going to go down here and try to make this right with you, Cole. Even though Dinah don't even want to marry you. You done raped her. She ain't not once said she want to marry you. With that being said, now the boys done came back. And they like, I'm sure in their mind, they like, we should kill his nigga daddy right now. <laughs> Don't even let him go back. We should just sit his head back on the stake to let him know we ain't playing with him for what he just did. <laughs> I could see that. And as they said in 21, it said that surely death is due to this man. Um, it says the most high Yah. Elohim of the whole earth commanded knowing his children that man shall never rob a commandment nor commit adultery, which is really fornication, same commandment, right? And I say that because a lot of times you hear people say, so what was the commandments before the commandments? Oh no, y'all had already given instruction. It might not have been on no, 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 uh, um, concrete plaques or whatnot. He didn't write them with his finger in, in, in a way, in a tangible way for us to see. But they knew instructions because them is two commandments. He just said, don't rob, don't commit adultery. And they like Shechem done ravaged and committed fornication. And none of the people said nothing. So what they're really saying is, dude, breaking our commandments. And these his people so wicked, they stood by and watched. And surely death is due to this man. And the reason why I say that is because back to today. This is for the men and the women of Zion that I speak of in America. But. You hear a lot about a sexual assaults and molestation and rape of the young men and the women amongst our people. And it's one of the things that, it, in my opinion, is one of the biggest black eyes on the descendants of slaves in America. And the reason being is, is one of those things that a lot of times we hide in the family because we don't want to say to uncle or with some young men to act. Uh, or the aunt's friend, some woman, like it goes both ways. I've heard this in a lot of different ways. Um, and it's one of the things that we frown down upon and we shouldn't because we see with our ancestors, surely death is due to this man. Like this was nothing ever to be played with. And we see now, like I was listening to, um, not even what I was listening to, but in a lot of cases with, uh, and you have to get these people to admit it because a lot of times it's different, but a lot of times now when you get to hearing about homosexuality amongst our people, and I believe this happens with a lot of people, but I only speak for our people. Somebody being got molested or something young and it ain't been spoken of and dealt with properly and it then went on for years because the family hiding it within the family, because it's, it's just something about our people. This is the one thing that we hide. We will say anything, just about anything. But when these type of things go on in our households, uh, be it a granny house with an uncle, or, uh, you know, you spent the night at your auntie house and then her older son, uh, there'd be a lot of these type of things go on. And we have glossed over it. And it's been for years, because I can remember hearing elders around me tell stories about not wanting to say it to make their daddy mad or their mama mad and this and that person growing up. And it's done played a part into uh, this supercharged sexuality of our youth and how big homosexuality done got. And this is why, yeah, and I believe this is one of the lessons here that this is a grave sin. And Yah tells us in Deuteronomy, you never whore out the daughters of Zion. You, you protect them. You don't allow those type of things to go on because we see now the type of things it'll lead to. And I believe that's played a part into um, the sexual promiscuity, um, the recklessness of the men and the women of our people today, and definitely homosexuality as well. Because I've heard people tell stories that getting raped young, been always having them feeling like they had to be a certain type of way. Now, you don't get that in that community. They don't speak that. Uh, they too busy trying to prove scientifically you could just be born like that. No. If you could get them to tell the truth, like I say, I don't speak for all people because I ain't all people, but I do speak for our people um, and people I know like that. If you can get them to tell you the truth, a lot of times it trades back 
to something like this be didn't happen and somebody be didn't held it to their chest or maybe spoken and somebody kind of just glossed over like it was nothing and maybe even told you you was lying and this will mess somebody up. And I think that's one of the lessons here that Yah's letting it be known. Damn. You don't play that. Y'all don't play that. Anything anybody want to add to this before we move forward from that point? This is why we got to guard these kids, though. We ain't going for that. This that ain't that ain't this ain't that. Um, here lately, I've seen uh, a lot of uh, uh, controversial uh, discussions about this, and one uh, was uh, about a school teacher. Um, she was a uh, Latin uh, girl that uh, had gotten pregnant by a 13-year-old student of hers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the mother was absolutely out of her socket. I mean, she was really, really angry about it. Uh, but the uh, judge uh, only put her on probation and uh, uh, did not uh, confine her and uh, let her, you know, uh, stay at home with the child. And uh, you know, to me, I thought that was that was really, really wrong for that judge to do that. That he should have uh, uh, did some type of punishment to her because, you know. Uh, Looking at, at uh, Laura Pippen, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, the question came up that uh, she was around that boy when he was young because she's only 16 years older than him. And uh, who is to say that she wasn't, uh, you know, training him or uh, leading him to come open to her? Uh, years before that, when uh, he was young, you know, if they, if both families hung around each other, you know, she had a chance to do that. You know, like uh, the uh, uh, topic was even brought up if uh, a female goes to a young boy and says, oh, you're handsome. And uh, you are really, really uh, something. I'm going to wait on you. Well, you would kind of play that off. True. But if it was, uh, on the other hand, if it was uh, a man that uh, said that to a female, oh, my God, the hinges will fall off the door. True. You, because uh, that is saying that he is openly uh, telling her that he wants to have sex with her. Why wouldn't it be the same for the female? And uh, uh, the last one was uh, the uh, news reporter on CNN. He <laughs> had said that when he was a young boy, and this is to uh, piggyback on what you were saying about <laughs> happening at a young age. He was playing with a lot of his cousins over his aunt and uncle's house, mm -hmm. and they decided that uh, I guess because of how he looked, maybe he looked uh, effeminate or whatever. But anyway, they threw him down and they raped him. And uh, he's saying that uh, he, he more or less alluded that that is what caused him to be homosexual today. So mm. uh, it definitely does happen with uh, bad experiences uh, with young people at a young age, uh, uh, I used to uh, watch, uh, forget this guy's name, but he, he look, he's a weird looking guy. He wears long hair and he just does radio. And uh, he would always ask um, these girls that came on uh, who were now strippers or their poll workers or whatever, how did your childhood go? And each and every one of them, and maybe he uh, uh, pre-interviewed them, I don't know, but each and every one of them that was on that show 
said that when they were young, something out of the ordinary happened to them to introduce them at a, uh, a at a young age below the age of 10 uh, to sex by a grown up or someone considerably older than themselves. So uh, true enough, uh, we have to be more on the guard with uh, our young people because uh, women, men, men and women uh, can be the ones who uh, initiate uh, those horrible acts against young children to cause them to uh, deform in their growth. True. And it's a mental thing. And uh, I used to be one of them people like, to your point about boys and girls, it is looked at different with boys and it shouldn't be though, because like even when I was coming up, so I remember when I lost my virginity, I was 11 and the girl was 18. And I remember going to tell my homies back when you're 11, like, dude, I got some. And like, I thought I was the man. Well, now fast forward to how I live now. If I had a son and he was to lose his virginity at 11 with a girl that's eight, with any girl, but definitely something 18, I guess a good chance I might go shoot her father behind that. <laughs> so like, you live and you learn, because I thought that was so cool at a young age, but now it's like, no, nah, that's not a honey. Like, I will feel the same way if something happened to my daughter. And a lot of that play into, and like, I've heard stories as well, just in, in my family and locally. Like, people tell me, girls I know who grow up promiscuous be like, well, you know, at a young age, somebody was doing woo-woo, and I, I just always been excited since then. Like, it's the littlest thing to turn. I feel like even as a man, losing my virginity so young is probably why I was a whoremonger and I was always so chasing women in the manner that I did. You know, so it play a part in a multitude of ways. And I feel like one of the lessons here is y'all letting us know surely death is due to the man or woman who does these type of things because I agree with you. It's not looked at as egregious of an act, I believe, because women are penetrating men. But in my opinion, and especially as an Israelite, no, it's the same. And if I had a son and he was in high school and he'd tell me some teacher, to, even if she didn't course him into it, or what, even if he was on that and she agreed, I'm losing it. So, nah, nah, surely death is to the man or woman and to his household. And I feel like that's y'all letting us know that ain't how it go. And we, I, I really believe, and this is just my opinion, but I really believe this over-sexualized way that our people be, the way the men be, like we got to have all these women, like even in the awakening, all this polygamy and we need all these wives. A lot of that stems back to this, man. Because a lot of, just speaking for, for black men, a lot of all of this pimp player, we got to have all these women, all these, all these chicks around mentality stem back to Losing virginities young uh, and always chasing something like that. So we 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 see, we 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 see the, as they say, you reap what you sow. We see what's being sold by this type of behavior going unchecked amongst our people here in America. And in a lot of cases, it do. That's frowned upon in black households to even say the uncle or the aunt did something or one of their friends. And that's one black eye that I will say that is on our people that we hide a lot of that. And now we see the results of that. Anybody else got something for this before we move on from this? But we see Yaz like, nah, the boys like surely death. <laughs> death is acceptable in this case. Like, no, you lost your mind. If ain't nobody else got nothing to add. And they like, no, nah, we got commandments. We don't live like that. That's another reason why I believe this goes on now, because when you put a lost people in the land, who don't know nothing about themselves, it becomes like Sodom as we see going through judges and anything goes. But no, nah, that ain't, that's not, that's not official behavior. Verse 22, you want to keep going, Ock? Yes. 
uh, surely thou knowest and understandest that the judgment of death is due to Shishem and to his father and to the whole city on account of the thing which he has done. I think they ain't playing. They like the whole city got to go. <laughs> we ain't trying to hear. He out of order. And that's the proper response. Like, I'm not saying we go kill no whole city, but it should be addressed um, to the highest order. Hallelujah. And while they were speaking before their father in this matter, behold, Hamor, the father of Shishem, came to speak to Jacob, Jacob uh, the words of his son concerning Dinah. And he said before Jacob and before his sons. And oh, they was like, we should kill him right now. We shouldn't even let him go back. We should send his head back on a platter and make his son see that we coming. Yep. Go ahead. And Hamor speak, spoke unto them, saying, The soul of my son, Shishem, longeth for your daughter. I pray you give her unto him for a wife and intermarry with us. Give us your daughters and we will give you our daughters, and you shall dwell with us in our land, and we will be as one people in the land. Now, mind you, Jacob was just spent 20 years with Laban, who was, who was, who was, who was doing the most. But Jacob just spent 20 years with Laban because Ripka told him, I don't want you marrying no Canaanites. Go up here and get a, a wife from amongst our people. Uh, we don't know what these people been on. Now, 20 years later, you got a Hivite, a, Hiv a Hivite telling you, yeah, you should just give us your daughters. Um, I give y'all our daughters and we should just intermarry them and basically make another try. Like, what? No, Jacob here, this, and he like, boy, my mama didn't even want me to marry none of y'all. Made me go, <laughs> made me go let my uncle get over on me for 20 years because of that. So, you know, he listening to this and he thinking, fam, the lost his mind. That's what he's thinking. Go ahead. For our land is very extensive. So dwell ye and trade therein and get possessions in it. And do therein as you desire. And no one shall prevent you by saying a word to you. And Hamor ceased speaking unto Yoko and his sons. And, behel and behold, Shishim, his son, had come after him, and he said before them. He was bold. And Shishim spoke before Yaakov and his sons, saying, May I find favor in your sight that you will give me your daughter, and whatever you say unto me, that will I do for her. Ask me for, an, for abundance of dowry and a gift, and I will give it. And wh whatever you shall say unto me, uh, that will I do. And whoever he be that will rebel against your orders, he shall die. Only give me the damsel for a wife. My thing, he trying to buy her. And you get a lot of that in today's society. People thinking you could, they could just buy anything. We just buy a woman. We're going to do what we want. And we'll go buy this woman, this whatever. And that ain't how this go. He trying to buy her. Now, I know there's a scripture in Leviticus that talk about if you catch a woman in the field. And because um, I've seen people advocate that scripture like you could just rape. But that's not that don't mean you could just rape like this woman has to be in agreement with that. And if you were to do that, you have to take a dowry to her father and this, this, that and the fourth. And if I'm mistaken, the father can still say no. You know what I mean? Like. But he's trying to buy her. Mind you, they ain't even talked to their sister yet. You done raped her. Talking about, may I find favor in your sight? Like, and this just go to show you how when things get lawless too, because they whole way of approaching this is out of order. <laughs> Hamar out of order for allowing his son to talk him into going to do this. Cause I believe he know he out of order though, because I believe he old enough to remember people talk about Abraham and he like, man, we so foul. 
people in this area love Abraham and Isaac. How we going to say we done? You know what I mean? So I believe it's a lot of things at play here. But the way they going about this, this is out of order. Lauren, yeah. I see your hand. Oh, go ahead, Obadiah. Lauren, after you. I uh, recall back uh, when uh, Noah first um, Canaan, mm -hmm. because uh, Canaan's father had been with uh, his mother. Mm -hmm. Canaan's uh, Ham's mother, and he uh, conceived uh, Canaan. Mm -hmm. So Noah uh, cursed Canaan. So I'm I'm thinking this was uh, to magnify amongst the Canaanites mm -hmm. to all these people that were around uh, the Hebrews were Canaanites, sure. and they thought that type of behavior was okay, which it's not. True. And you know what? Jacob, having studied up under, uh, I believe he studied with Noah for a while, but definitely under Shem and Eber and heard all them stories, he would know that. But Isaac and Abraham would both know that. So as they're around these Canaanites, like, no, nah, we ain't marrying amongst them. They know that story. Like, dude, y'all father raped our great grandmother, the, the mother of all of us, right? And that's how you got here. And I do believe that's why they think this behavior is acceptable. This is also why we constantly hear like, no, nah, don't take no wives from amongst them because they come from a Noah curse. Y'all didn't never curse the Canaanites, though. Make sure we understand that. Y'all never cursed them. After Ham did that, Noah said curse to be Canaan. And the reason why he said curse be Canaan is because right before that, y'all told Noah, I'm going to bless you and your son. So Noah, knowing that he can't speak a different, contrary to what y'all said, I can't turn around and curse Ham because y'all just told me I'm going to bless Ham. Okay. So instead of that, Noah cursed Canaan. And well, how much weight that hold with y'all is, is yet to be seen, or it, it will be seen, I should say, because we know. I guess it, it has been saying Yah showed that he was with that because he told Israel when they go back in, kill them all. <laughs> I'm sure that played into it too. But you are right. That would be known amongst them, that whole story. None of that would be a secret to them. So another reason why I'm sure they're looking at them like, these dudes are tripping in here. It's on you, Lauren. No, I want to say it reminds me of America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they stay very bold. They was just bold. And they always was bold too. Because later on they bold with Joshua. And like that's why I think that's why the father told them to go stomp them out. Because they keep being wicked even through from that time right on up. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was just sad. This whole story was sad because with the Levites, and I always think about in Genesis, uh when he's giving the prophecy for them in the future. And he talks about Levi and he said with their anger, he said, they slew, slew men, but he speaks that he was like, um, you know, mercy be to, to whomever come and, you know, in, in their sanctuaries or come around them, which is Levi. Um, I think he speaks of this. When he talks about that prophecy, he speaks of how his temper really, um, he went haywire. Um, they did the tribes um as far as her brothers i do believe the way that they felt was like well there's no other way um we're not going to size up with them we're not going to be okay with them but as we see i think jacobs get angry because he's like why did you do that y'all would have still did it um you know it still looked as if that they did it their own way though mm -hmm. hallelujah and you know what the fact that uh, um, we had a Levitical priesthood as well also says that, you know, um, they were not a order for the way that they went about this either. Because if they were, you know, why would Yah still allow them to go on to represent him? Remember, he told the Levites that your inheritance is me, like you represent me. So 
uh, that also is a nugget to think of with this um, as we move forward. Shalom, shalom, um, Akulti. Akulti, I see you. Uh, anything else anybody want to add to this before we move forward? Shalom, everyone. Shalom, shalom. How you doing? Really well, thank you. Sorry I'm late. It's all good. You all, you're right on time. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it's on you, Obadiah. We can move forward. And Simeon and Levi answered Hamor and Shishim, his son, deceitfully, saying, all you have spoken unto us, we will do for you. And behold, our sister is in your house. But keep away from her until we send our father Isaac concerning this matter. For we can do nothing without his consent. For he knoweth the ways of our father Abraham. And whatever he saith unto us, we will tell you. We will conceal nothing from you. And Simeon and Levi spoke unto Shishim and his father in order to find a uh, pretext and to seek counsel what was to be done to uh, Shishim and to his city in this matter. And when Shishim and his father heard the words of Simeon and Levi had seemed good in their sight. And Shishim and his father came forth to go home. And when they had gone, the sons of Yaakov said unto their father, saying, Behold, we know that death is due to these wicked ones and to their city because they have tra transgressed that which Yah has commanded unto Noah and his children and his seeds after them. You can stop there, Ar. So, hey, they plotting already. <laughs> like, okay, we gonna holler at our fathers and you see they let them know, man. Yitzchak, Abraham, uh, no, nah, we do, we, we move a certain way. Um, we move with a certain order. We got to check back with the elder, which is our grandfather, our father's father. Uh, whatever he say, that's how we move. Um, and the whole time they saying that, using that as a time to try to figure out what they going to do. But in their mind, the whole time is, no, nah, one of y'all got to die. Both of y'all got to die behind this because you was out of order. You done raped our sister. You holding her hostage in your house like the nerve of you to come up here and we still ain't talked to our sister talking about you gonna marry her we don't even know if that's what she want with you like nah and they heard the story because like it said earlier rachel and leah were there so they didn't come back and they like man he took our daughter and raped her like you know so it's going to show you like our people always had a way with words like yeah you know it's all good man just let us figure it out we're gonna come let you know what time it is but they plotting already on no, it's righteous judgment behind that. You out of order. And this shows you the seriousness of when these things happen and why uh, even as a people today, we need to deal better with this. And even in this awakening, because you've heard situations where, like I say, there have been not necessarily men, but definitely women who have came out and said about certain factions and things that went on that things weren't done decent and in order to be nice. Uh, and we see, I believe this story is an example of y'all letting us know that you don't play with any of the children, but you definitely don't play with the daughters of Zion in no kind of way, and not this one. Hallelujah. I'm going to pick up the reading from here. Thank you, Aki. So in verse 35, it says, and also because Shechem did this thing to our sister Dinah in defiling her for such vileness shall never be done amongst us. They like, we can't honor it. <laughs> you know, just even thinking about it, I can't, knowing that these is my 
my grandfather and his brothers and the uncles. I could just hear this conversation. Look, we know you don't really be on that pops. We don't honor that at all. We'll never live it down. Something got to be done. I don't know what, but something got to be done because we can't honor it. How are we supposed to look at Dinah? We her big brothers. We supposed to protect her. And it's like, we just, done. no, something got to be done. Verse 36. Now, therefore, know and see what you will do and seek counsel and pretext what is to be done to them in order to kill all the inhabitants of the city. Like, this is of the highest order. Like, this ain't to be brushed under the rug. This ain't to be um, downplayed. Like, we don't even just want them. The, the, the whole city need to die behind. It. Like, this goes to show you how serious of a matter this was to our ancestors. Um Verse 37, it says, and Simeon said to them, here's proper advice for you. Tell them to circumcise every male amongst them as we are circumcised. And if they do not wish to do this, we shall take our daughter from them and go away. And if they consent to do this and we'll do it, then when they are sunk down with pain, we will attack them with our swords as upon one who is quiet and peaceable. And we will slay every male person amongst them. And Simeon's advice pleased them. And Simeon and Levi resolved to do unto them as it were proposed. So they like, we're going to make them get circumcised. Okay, y'all want to marry? Y'all want to give us y'all daughters and take our daughters? Then y'all got to come a part of this covenant. I'm sure that's how they said it too. Well, we got a certain covenant. We do things a certain way. For us to give you our daughters and you to give us ours. We we worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Like they would have had to really go sell this. And part of that is you got to circumcise every male in the city because that's how we do this, you know, which is true, which is true. But they're using this for occasion for righteous judgment and true. It says, and on the next morning, Shechem and Hamar, his father, came again unto Jacob and his sons to speak concerning Dinah. And to hear what answer the sons of Jacob would give to their words. And the sons of Jacob spoke deceitfully to them, saying, We told our father Yitzchak all your words, and your words pleased him. And, and just think for not Shechem, but Hamor, his the so-called king, his father, for them to tell them we told we told Yitzchak what happened and his words pleased him. That should have been a red flag for him right there on some about this ain't right. Because you could tell by the way he addressed his son in the door. Even he kind of thinking like, you was filed for that. That should have been a red flag right there. Mind you, this is not no secret. These dudes, and we know that when Shechem asked, who is that girl? They said, that's the daughter of Yaakov. One of the uh, son of Yitz Yitzchak, that Hebrew. So like, they full well know who these people is. This ain't like, just somebody in this land and we don't know who they know you full well know who these people is and i'm and i'm just knowing it's cause highly respected because his father was highly respected that should have been a red flag oh they told isaac and isaac said it was cool nah that would have been like nah something about that don't sound right <laughs> real talk but he spoke unto us saying thus did ibrahim his father command him from the elohim master of the whole earth that any man who was not of his descendants that should wish to take one of his daughters shall cause every male belonging to him to be circumcised as we are circumcised and then we may give him our daughter for a wife they like they took it all the way to ibrahim like look the most i commanded our father every male amongst us got to be circumcised y'all want to be like that give us y'all daughters take our daughters Y'all got to y'all got to come part of this covenant. I'm sure they ain't just gonna say you gotta cut yourself. They like, you gotta become part of this covenant with the most high. That's the only way that's gonna work. And I know for sure, which I believe they respect uh Yitzchak, but if they call themselves not respecting Yitzchak, it's almost impossible that they don't honor Ibrahim. Because we've seen in his life, everybody honored him. It said he taught everybody came amongst him the word. He had that house which I believe is still where Yitzchak stay, which was the tree where you could come in north, south, east, west. He fed everybody, gave water to animals, clothed the kids, gave money to people to help them with their travels. Like 
even if there's any doubt about how they feel about Yitzchak, they honor Ibrahim to the fullest too. So they put an extra sauce on this, even used Ibrahim. Like, yeah, our father Ibrahim, you know, this is how we move. They really selling this. Verse 43. Now we have made known to you all our ways that our father spoke unto us, but we cannot do this of which you spoke unto us to give our daughter to an uncircumcised man or it is a disgrace to us. So now they draw the line in the saying, if you don't want to do it, then it's, it's up already. Either way, it's up. But we giving you an out that you don't know is, is, is on that. But if you don't want to do it, it's on that because you didn't disgrace us. That was a little bit more stern. But herein will we consent to you to give you our daughter, and we will also take unto ourselves your daughters, and we'll dwell amongst you and be one people as you have spoken. If you will hearken to us and consent to be like us, to circumcise every male belonging to you as we are circumcised. So they really pouring this on like, yeah, you know, we're going to do that. That's what's up. And how y'all feel? Let's get to it. And, and it's like, nah, nah, that ain't how that's going to go. Any comments, anything anybody want to add to this up until this point? It's on you, Lauren. I'm sorry. You know, I had to come and say something, but. You don't think that's kind of funny, though? Just a little bit. Now, they go in there and they basically talk him into it. Mm -hmm. But they never went to go see Isaac at all. Like, you know what? We're going to deal with this ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it was wrong. Because they, they, they lied. <laughs> they lied. And then, yeah, they already had in their hearts to kill them from the beginning. That's what I wanted to add. Mm -hmm. They knew that they was gonna kill kill him. I, I think when they first found out about Dinah, they knew that they was gonna kill him. Mm -hmm. Jacob knew they was gonna do that. That's why I said they was in the field and he just chilled. Yeah. They got back. He knew as soon as they got back and heard this, you and them not going for that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. He probably surprised that it's just Simeon and Levi. He probably like I expected you to be the one down here tripping. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm sure they all mad though. Let me wow. <laughs> Let me part was the one walk around like you know what time it is. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, going back to uh, what you uh, had alluded to uh, out in the fields in the city, mm -hmm. if uh, if uh, the damsel was in the city and she cried out uh, even if no one heard her uh, and she cried out then that was uh, uh, considered a rape if they were out in the field where nobody could hear her and she cried out then uh, it was uh, her word against his word and her word carried weight because there was no one to help her. She was uh, not having any cover uh, out there with her. Mm -hmm. So uh, what he did and what it says in Torah is that uh, they're supposed to be killed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And you know, you just made me remember in the Talmud, which is this quote unquote, supposedly the oral tradition, they started to put, because you know in the Talmud, they say it's different rabbis started to have conversation about it, and they started to really change y'all's word and the traditions and how they wanted to do it, really. And I know in the Talmud, when it talks about rape, it's stipulations on it. Like if a, if, if, a, if a man or a woman is of a certain age, then it's not to be put to death. And, and I can't even think of all the stipulations, but it's reckless stipulations that's not like what you just said. Um, um, which also speaks to um, the recklessness of what we would call the Talmud because that's never been acceptable behavior. Anything else anybody want to add? Verse 44, but herein will you consent to you to give you our daughter, and we will also take unto ourselves your daughter, 
and will dwell amongst you. Like, I can't believe they even let them tell them that. I'd have been like, these people don't dwell amongst nobody. I, I, no. Ain't none of them ever took a wife from amongst us. Now they just finna dwell amongst us. And be one people as you have spoken. If you will hearken to us and consent to be like us, to circumcise every male belonging to you as we are circumcised. And if you will hearken unto us to have every male circumcised as we are circumcised, as we have commanded, then we will come to you and take our, our daughter from you and go away. If you don't want to do it. And Shechem and his father Hamar heard the words of the sons of Jacob, and this thing pleased them exceedingly. Yeah, because Hamar is like, I know they ain't feeling us. Shechem, I believe, is blinded by his own lust. He don't even really see what's going on. His <laughs> father. Go ahead. What'd you say? Uh, I, I didn't say anything. I was just uh, giggling at what you had said. Yeah, I think Shakem is a little blinded by his lust. He's young. His father kind of know. You could tell by the way he was talking in the beginning. He kind of like, I don't know if they're going to go for that. Because uh, as a father, too, you probably thinking if you had did that to my daughter, I wouldn't be trying to feel you. It says, and Shechem and his father heard the words of the sons of Jacob, and the thing pleased them exceedingly. And Shechem and his father, Hamor, hastened to do the wishes of the sons of Jacob. For Shechem was very fond of Dinah, and his soul was riveted to her. So they went to go do it. And Shechem and his father, Hamor, hastened to the gate of the city, and they assembled all the men of their city and spoke unto them, the words of the sons of Yacob, saying, so they went to the gate. We know a lot of things get discussed at the gate because that's where people coming in and going and out. The gate is like probably the most popping spot of any city. That's where a lot of trade and businesses is happening. Um, you know, people looking for work. That's where you go get hired. They go stand at the gate. Anybody leaving the city to go into the field to do some work, maybe they'll hire you. You know, I can see the gate just being a, a, a big place of commerce in every city. He said, and they assembled every man of their city and spoke unto him the words of the sons of Jacob, saying, We came to these men, the sons of Jacob, and we spoke unto them concerning their daughter. And these men will consent to do according to our wishes. And behold, our land is of great extent for them, and they will dwell in it and trade in it, and we shall be one people. We will take their daughters and our daughters. We will take their daughters and our daughters we will give unto them. For wives. I'm sure some of the men of the city is like, I don't want to get circumcised for you doing that, man. What is wrong with you? What? That's a big step. 49. But only on this condition will these men consent to do this thing. That every male amongst us be circumcised as they are circumcised. As their Elohim commanded them. And when we shall have done according to their instructions to be circumcised, then will they dwell amongst us together with their cattle and possessions, and we shall be as one people with them. So now they even see that Jacob is super rich too. Y'all, they pocket watching. Now it ain't just about them dwelling. This with the cattle and their possessions too. They pocket watching you, Cole. He rich. And that is kind of how I go today. Like somebody poor is kind of like whatever. But when you got money, especially in America, when you got money, you could do and say and act in a way that poor people can't, whether right or wrong. That's how this Babylonian American system is set up. And they like together with his cattle, uh, we shall be one people. He gonna add to us. And like I say, it, it's a very good possibility that your cold even being there is the richest person in this city, maybe richer than her more, who was the king. Now, because y'all been blessing him in that way. And when all the men of the city heard the words of Shechem and his father, Hamor, then all the men of their city were agreeable to this proposal. So, look, they like, yeah, Jacob, Jacob got it. You know, we would love to have him around her. Yeah, they could marry our daughters. They rich. We know our daughters will be taken care of. No, that's what a father always was thinking when he marrying his daughter. Who's going to take care of my daughter? And they obeyed to be circumcised, for Shechem and his father Hamor were greatly esteemed by them. They, they honored these, this king and this prince, being the princes of the land. And on the next day, Shechem and Hamor, his father, rose up early in the morning, and they assembled all the men of their city into the middle of the city, 
and they called for the sons of Jacob, who circumcised every male belonging to them on that day and the next. And they circumcised Shechem and Hamor, his, his father, and the five brothers of Shechem. And then everyone rose up and went home. For this thing was from the Most High Yah against the city of Shechem. So we see that Yah is in agreement with this. There is a thing as righteous judgment, and this was done righteously. It said this thing is from the Most High. And from Yah was Simeon's counsel in this matter. So Yah's the one told him, like, yeah, y'all got to kill them. Uh, I guess it's the first time Yah said kill him, because like Lawrence stated, when they go back in in Joshua, Yah told him kill all them again. <laughs> y'all didn't let too many of them get away. Simeon's, he said, and from Yah was Simeon's counsel in this matter, in order that the Most High might deliver the city of Shechem into the hands of Jacob's two sons. And this will also start, well, Abraham would have started it when he took 300 men and beat all the kings who had con conquered Sodom. But this would also fuel the legend. Man, it was only two sons of Yaakov. They killed the whole city. This would fuel those legends of, man, you can't be messing with the sons of Yaakov. And I think this is where this is going to start. We're about to see a number, multiple wars um, kind of kick off right here behind this anything anybody want to add on all of this going away the work they went and circumcised itself i see you lauren go ahead shalom yeah i have a lot to say it you ever um what's that verse it's luke 6 luke six forty three, when he says for a good tree bring forth not for um not forth corrupt fruit neither do a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit they never was right. Like from even from there, and when we go all the way to Joshua, you see the pattern. Um, when they're with uh, what is that, Abimelech? They're mentioned during the time of Abimelech as well. They're mentioned um a couple times, a little things, little different places, but it's all wicked. There's never nothing good from them. Mm -hmm. Never seen nothing good from them. Mm. And you could tell because even even their sons and daughters, even as it progressed, and then you see them with Joshua, and, and like you said, the father, like, are you kidding? Like, get rid of them; they'll be a thorn in your side. Like, do not deal with these people. Mm. And they they still wanted to Israel. Like, you know, we always want to be friends with people and talk to people. <laughs> and the father said, "They like when you get there, like, do not do that with the Hivites, the Jebusites." It's funny. And he's a Hivite. Shack him. <laughs> and he's he's telling you there, he's talking about the same people. And then he's talking about them when he actually names it and says the Shechem. So it's like he's two, it's like they're two to three different places. They was even with the Gibbusites. And they were Confederate. And they did wickedness. They raped, they killed people, they did uh children sacrifice. They was in the heaviest sense. True. Crazy, too, to think about it. But, yeah. Yeah, and then the father is constantly like, y'all go kill them. So we just see, just told Simeon. And then going back into this land, because I just seen that in, in Deuteronomy. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 17, it says, But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perzites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as Yahuwah Elohim have commanded thee. So they definitely was on the list of nations. Yah said, utterly destroy them. Like, don't leave nobody. The word for utterly destroy is karam, to seclude, um, especially destruction, physically and reflectively, to be blunt as to the nose, make a curse, consecrate, destroy, um, slay, make away. Like, they were one of the nations, y'all said, do not leave any. And it's a good chance. The reason why some of them are going to end up getting left is even knowing this story, our people going into the land with Joshua still probably took some of these women as wives in the end. Knowing that y'all, knowing this story about our auntie and knowing this that y'all done told us on multiple times, <laughs> don't let none of them live. They still let some of them live. 
Go ahead. It's on you. One more. Judges, can we go to like Judges 9, verse 20? Um, what it says, but if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let the fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. He's mentioned all through here. I mean, we're speaking of them, that they're they're entwined. Mm -hmm. Sad to say they were mixed in already. You can see the beef right there. You just like what? It, what, these are the same people, and I always looked at that the names, follow the names, because the names show you a deeper story in in the people itself. Because when you follow them, it's like okay, so we had problems with them for a while, and the father that was basically due to their sins. Their sins was tremendous. True. And I forgot about this story. Abimelech was Jerubbabel's son who had made league with them. And then once it all fell apart, they turned on him. True. The men of Shechem. And he was using these men of Shechem to try to oppress his brothers. I think he was mixed with, with these people or something like that, if I'm mistaken. I can't remember the story verbatim, but... I think his mother. His mother was one. Yeah, exactly. His mother. Which was... And that, that's what I'm saying. Whatever Israelite took her as a wife and did that, he knew this story. He knew that was out of order. Jacob them is like, no, nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> but most definitely, you are correct. This is a, this is a, and you, and this goes to show that we didn't learn. Whoever started this didn't learn, and we see how Yah caused this to to to, to happen. Um, because this this you know we supposed to look at this story with. Um, Jacob and be like, nah, we ain't gonna do that. I can't take no Hivites, no wives, man. Look how they people move. They was foul. They did our ancestors like that. You know, that's how people in this world look at it. They'll be like, nah, we can't, uh, um, nah, we can't do that. Look how they did our ancestors or whatnot. But going way back, because we ain't even talk about today of people who'd have lost their identity. These people was, this identity was the number one thing they talked about. And Yet still, Yerubabel, oh yeah, you're right, because I think Yerubabel took like his maid or something. Yes, yes, she was a handmaid. There we go. Yeah. I got to find the verse for you. Hold on. And they I, ain't been, I ain't been down that story in a while, but I remember. I they was right here. 918, it says, and you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, yeah. three score and ten persons upon one stone. And I've made Abimelech the son of his maid servant. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he cat he went with the men of Shechem and killed Yerubabel's sons to try to get like this leadership position. But he was not the son of their mothers, which was his wives. He was the son of the maid servant, exactly, who was king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that go to show you the men of Shechem was still crafty against us, but really Yerubabel was the one out of order because he ain't had no business having no babies by his maid servant who was no Hivite considering he know the history of our people and this story that we're reading of our ancestors, his ancestor as well before that. Mm -hmm. True indeed. Anything else anybody got? I didn't even get into them taking the city so I guess that'll be next week. Yeah, and it's a pretty long chapter, 70 verses. So we're going to get to it pretty quickly next week. Yeah, 34, they, they mix it up. Yeah, 34, I'm, I'm looking ahead. I see they, uh, yeah, next week. So next week, that's what we're going to be on. It's just, it's just giving us every, this is at 33. Y'all just letting us know this was, this was why I honored them and allowed them to do that. But there's multiple ways why this was filed already. There's multiple ways. Anything else anybody got for this? <sighs> we a little early, but ain't no point in trying to break into 34. Might as well read it all together. Hallelujah. Uh, if ain't nobody else got nothing to add, we're going to pray out. We're going to get out of here on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a good read. We've had a lot of uh, participation. And uh, it's been really enjoyable. Hallelujah. I, you know what? That's because this is one of them topics that's still so prevalent today. 
And like those events that you gave us, like those are events going on right now. Um, it's just too many, to be honest. You could think of too many going on right now. I could think of some other events with some jokers online as in tour with each other about uh, one of them called one of them a pedophile and the other one went and got uh, the, basically pulled some receipts on the person who tried to call him a pedophile had raped a woman. And uh, the woman was on that, went to the police and all that. And, you know, they kind of just downplayed it. And the woman was talking about how she lived with the scars of that today. And I think that's why this story is important because we see that that's not of y'all for that to be like that real talk. Like, but once again, when you are people who don't know who you are, you will accept the things that go on around you. And we know amongst the other nations around us all the time, like the powerful, um, uh, prime example, the me too movement, right? Bill Cosby and R Kelly kind of became the face of it for obvious reasons, right? But the most powerful people involved in it was of other nations, and they was way more powerful than them jokers. When you get to talk about Epstein and Harvey Weinstein and, and uh, Charlie Rose and uh, homie who was on Good Morning America or whatever, the Matt Laurel buddy or... or, uh, or um, Hell, Bill Clinton, Donald Trump name have been through in the midst of all of that. Uh, but it's funny because because the only one to really go to jail, I think the only ones who did go to jail was Bill Cosby and R. Kelly. So a lot of times when that movement is spoke about, like you almost, and they probably were the biggest, most named celebrities. But when it comes to like powerful men with power, realistically, R. Kelly didn't have no power. He just sung. He couldn't fire and hire nobody. He couldn't oppress nobody. Need same with Bill Cosby. Like he had money, he was in certain circles, but he didn't really have no power. The extent of his power was before all that. He was running around saying black men need to pull their pants up and stop saying the word nigga. Then after that happened, now it's like, yeah, I don't know what I was on. I, you know, strangely, <laughs> Bill Cosby be on Twitter talking about he an Israelite now, which may be why he had to go through that. Because in the midst of him being locked up, in the midst of him being locked up, Bill Cosby, somewhere in that, start being on We the Children of Israel, which is a 360 for him. Because before he left, he had started to think he was bigger than black people. He started to act like OJ to me. But the reason why I'm bringing him up is they did never had a power that like a Harvey Weinstein did. This dude was having all these actresses i seen the list of the actresses who we had did some of that with. It went on to be some of the biggest actresses in Babylonian Hollywood. Like, he was going crazy. Same with Jeffrey Epstein. When you look at Jeffrey Epstein and they be talking about his logs, like the, the prince from, from London or England, Andrew was one of the people he was doing that with. You got Trump and Bill Clinton both involved. Bill Gates get associated with him. The owner of Victoria's Secrets get associated with him. Like, these dudes were super powerful with these things going on. So when you talk about a people who have forgot their identity, what I'm saying is that's part why this thing goes glossed over amongst our people, because that's another way of us taking on the way of the heathen. And y'all, hell, going back through slavery, a lot of us has European DNA in their DNA because slave owners was raping some of the women and the men. And we see from this story, that's one of the things where they went too far. Y'all like, yeah, you going into captivity. He ain't never gave the green light to rape the women and the men. No, nah, that's something that you did a little too much. And that's part of the payment and why this got to come down in that manner. And the reason why we gloss over that, I'm just saying, is another one of us taking on the ways of the people around us. Because amongst, amongst the heathen Gentiles amongst us, it get downplayed amongst them a lot too. That's why the men like Harvey Weinstein and all of them have been able to operate at the highest levels of doing this for forever. Jeffrey Epstein been operating doing this. You talk of 20, 30 years of this. Yahakanah. Shalom, Makoti. Shalom, Aki. Shalom, family. 
Um, I was just going to say that just to your point, um, <laughs> one of the things that Bill Cosby did, um, the power that he did wield, the power that we all wield, is you're, you're fine to, um, you, can, you can pretty much have the world as long as you're willing to be wicked. But the minute you're willing to stand up and tell people what's correct, pull up your pants, act like you got good sense. Um, I think he took his, he started to take his role a little more seriously. The fact that he was impacting, he had impacted a generation with his shows. He was um, who he was to all these black colleges. He started to own that. And when you do that, and when you start talking about taking over a, uh, television uh studios and 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 actually getting your own channel and things that would benefit your people overall when you get that kind of platform it's not so much that you know he was super powerful man but once he had he it's basically that he had black people's ear it's the same reason Tupac's not around it's the same reason that all our great black men have been exterminated is because the minute you speak the truth and you own who you are and the great power that you wield is that you are the light. And once you realize that and start to walk in that kind of function and gain the ears of those other brown people listening to you, then you are the worst threat ever. When you start to walk in function and just be a family man and do things in order and we start to see that and take note, they know the power of that. That's, you are powerful. Powerful. We all are if we walk in our true nature and function and they want to keep that down by any means. So we don't know. Maybe R. Kelly was going to tell on somebody. Yeah, he was doing some very terrible things. And maybe he was going to tell on somebody more powerful than them, true. than himself. And that, you know, Michael Jackson died for the same reason. Anytime yeah. you stand up, that's then, then you become the problem. So I just wanted to say that. Shalom. And you are right. As long as you you can do that and prosper with us, as long as you're willing to be wicked. But if you show any wavering, then Michael Jackson is a prime example. Michael Jackson had been doing the things he had been accused for before he died. He was being accused of things that was happening going back to the 80s, early 90s. Yet he was able to get away with that when he was playing by their rules. But once he started to speak out against these record companies and they robbing people and the different things, and even the governments, how he was talking about how they don't care about us and these governments ain't going to feed poor people. And you started to see here that get louder. I agree. Same with Bill Cosby. Um, it is rumored that he was trying to buy a network station and which is a no, no. Cause you, if you think networks and Hollywood is how they, how they push narrative. And if he owns one and he ain't allowing certain narratives to be pushed, maybe that may put a dent in this prison pipeline that we see for people to get paid off. So uh, you are correct in that as well. Another prime example of that is um, the gang leader from Chicago, Larry Hoover. When he had killed them people in the, in the, in the eighties, maybe the late seventies, he had got like 30, 40 years, but he was due to get out of state penitentiary. But when he was in jail, he started calling to the Chicago, telling the gangs. That's when he changed GD from Gangster Disciple. He started calling it growth and development. And he was still flawed. But what his growth and development was, we need to start making sure all our people graduate and go to school. We need to make sure they start voting. And he starts saying stuff like, every GD need to vote for such and such. And at the time, they, play, they was playing it like it's 500,000. It's a million gang members in Chicago. So if you could get every member of a gang Plus, Illinois is one of the states where felons vote. So if you could get every member in the gang to vote for a Republican, then you could change Illinois from always having. Because One thing about Illinois is, is Democratic senators, but the whole Democrat vote is in the Chicagoland area. The further south you get, the more rural they get. Illinois is really all red, except for the Chicagoland area. If you could get the gang to say, we ain't feeling you Democrats, we finna all vote Republican, then you would take the senators out of Illinois because without Chicago voting strong blue, Illinois is really a red state in the Midwest. A lot of people don't know that. So when Larry Hoover starts saying that, like, no, nah, all every GD need to vote such and such, growth and development, build up. And like I say, it was still flawed because they was still bankrolling it by saying we're going to sell drugs to our own people. But to your point, when he got to talking about swinging votes and we could pick the mayor and all that, 
boy, they brought that case against him, gave him quadruple life and put him in that mountain, that fair prison in Colorado where he in the mountain and he get one phone call a month. They completely silenced him when he started to change or even to show any wavering from that. I see your hand. Go ahead, Akoti. Oh, I was just going to piggyback off you. Same thing happened out here with um, uh, the, the gangster Tukey Williams. Same thing. When he told the, the two um, major gangs in L.A. to put the guns down and stop and, and talk to each other and, and called a peace between them. And they saw him do that powerful thing. Next thing you know, oh, his, ex his execution is, needs to be moved up. He's no longer getting that stay. <laughs> and he was and then they dealt away did away with him and he had already had life imprisonment why did he need to die but that's how it goes no true true indeed about that it all leads to everything else but once again when the people lose their identity you fair game for all of that this might be uh, uh, a little bit past uh, the uh, uh, goodness of the sauce, but uh, I wanted to bring this out as in uh, Leviticus 18, 22, thou shall not be with uh, mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Mm -hmm. and that is Yah, not only disapproves of it he hates it true he hates it so uh when when uh, uh those that are up there and they figure they can do whatever they want to they're doing not only uh uh women uh men just like uh back in days of slavery when uh they call it br uh bug breaking you know they they uh uh you know, defile the men's and uh, Yah says that, uh, you know, they're going to pay for that. You know, it, uh, he doesn't like it. Hallelujah. And to your point, it's a slave's mentality how we keep this type of behavior quiet amongst our families today because, you know, you kept it quiet then. The man was, uh, I, you hear stories about bug breaking when a slave owner would rape a man in front of all other men. The man was never the same. A lot of men killed themselves because it just took, it just took your dignity from you. And I think that's part of the reason why we keep a lot of this type of behavior down amongst our families today, because it goes back to that slave mentality and it brings out that pain. And that's, that's the story as we're reading today and it'll, it'll come out the rest of our, our next week. Y'all didn't call for that to be like that. And the punishment to be around here raping anybody, especially kids, was death to you, your family, and your whole city, depending on the situation. Y'all was not honoring that. And we'll see that as we go forward. This was a good conversation. Anything else anybody want to add for? I pray us out. Hallelujah. 34 next week. started the brothers turning up because after this war they're gonna go through and stump out quite a few of these nations like nah we ain't feeling none of y'all <laughs> after they do this man judah and all the rest of them get on man anybody get to tripping we ain't feeling nobody but uh chapter 34 uh is a big psychological has a big psychological effect on the rest of uh, the uh, Hamites that are around uh, the Hebrews, I mean, it really, it really uh, put fear in their hearts. True. It's one of the first times we. So, like I said, when everything happened with Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham saved Lot. He flexed a muscle, but it was against some people who was coming kind of closer into that land they weren't necessarily in the land of Canaan this is the first time and it ain't even a nation it's just a family but this is the first time where what you would call a Hebrew Israelite flexes muscle on their enemies right in this land and you are correct it causes a big psychological problem which leads to when they get into Egypt we got to do something about them they getting big 
if we fight a war, they're going to turn from us. Pharaoh and them like, yeah, we, you know, trick them and put them into to some bondage because of these stories. And we're going to see how, you know, I know one of these stories is going to be talking about how they was running up walls. And and my, I got an aku would always tell me when you read these wars amongst the boys as we're about to, uh, he would always liken it to that's where you get the samurai and kung fu culture from. When you see the movies like Crouching Tiger, where they running on the tops of trees, and that's the type of thing that it's about to describe with these boys. So it was, it was, it was almost superhero, like X Men. You know what I mean? Like comic book. Uh, and you are correct. It 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 set the tone for the way Israel's perceived. Because remember, when we come out of Egypt and we come back into these lands, which from this point to all of that is like. 250 years maybe it seems like a long time but it's really not remember scripture tells us from abraham to moses is 430 years and by this time we already know yitz yitz is getting old he about to pass because his eyes was dimming when before Jacob left and Jacob been gone 20 years right right uh Jacob start having these boys at 60s i think he died at like 137 um so he in range and he dies, he he takes us into Egypt, uh, free men naturally. Uh, and by the time you get to Moses from your code, that's really within like a hundred year period. So by the time we come out of Egypt and then they hear about how y'all did Egypt, that fear you talking about, all mm -hmm. of it comes back up. And these nations is like, man, they finna come destroy this. <laughs> you don't well, know you, what time it is. Before, I never really had any... Uh... Uh, concept of how powerful these sons were until uh, Lauren uh, suggested that I go in and read uh, the uh, uh, 12 uh, brothers uh, I forget what they call it but the testimonies mm -hmm. and your code actually runs down a deer a mm -hmm. deer can you imagine how fast it is? Usain Bolt doesn't have anything on that. No. It's in his blood, though, but no. <laughs> no, to catch a deer, no. I mean, Samson killed a lion. You know, you got people in our lineage, they talk about killing lions with hands. Samson from the tribe of Dan. Uh, it's a lot. Like, it's going to talk about them killing giants. As we go forward, this is one of the more exciting parts of the book of Jasher or the book of Yasher. But yeah, yeah, it is a lot to be taken from this point. Um, we'll keep that in mind as we move forward. Anything else anybody got? I wasn't sure if it was some hands up or not. Before we pray out, y'all can I hear with your hand down? I seen it was still up. I didn't know if it was up from the last time. It was up from the last time. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, everybody. We're going to leave it at that. If ain't nobody got nothing else, everybody good? Shalom, shalom. Who's that? Do I know you? Did I know that voice? Yeah, you know it's open. <laughs> Not to play with you. Shalom, Dre. It's Manah. <laughs> I definitely don't know who that is. From where? The but now I know from Berkeley. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know no Manaz from Oakland, but we'll figure it out. Hallelujah. As we just go into prayer before we go, you know, once again, we always just thank y'all for the opportunity to gather and to build together for um good conversation and good, good, good. And we see what y'all wanted us to glean from this today. Hallelujah. We thank him for bringing it out. Um, you all be mindful of that as we go forward and some of the things that we see, the things that have been made common or brushed under the rug. And, you know, always speak that truth to power, no matter what situation you're in and who may be affected, you know, stand on the word of y'all. Uh, cite this story to anybody who, you know, may be going through some of these things and, uh, acting like it's whatever they may be, let them know, man. Y'all, y'all didn't stated in scripture the penalty for some of these things that we let slide is death. Um, I ain't telling you to go kill nobody, but make sure a person know that 
uh, vengeance is y'all's and it's ramifications for these things. And we thank y'all for allowing us, giving us another tool in the toolbox to to help straighten our people out. Um, we just pray that y'all takes this dark cloud off our people for these things that hurt so many men and women young and, and change people's lives. We just ask the Father to take this cloud from amongst our people so that we can uh, start to be deal more righteously and, and to be more um, upright and forthright when it comes to dealing with things, however they must be dealt with, I'll be out, but these conversations need to be had I and mean, a multitude of families. I'm sure all everybody on here probably knows somebody in these type of situations where um, we haven't dealt with sexual sin um, properly. And we just pray, Abba Yah, that uh, you strengthen us as we go forth to do what's right according to your word, that you show us the correct path forward and you keep our hand on the on the plow and focused on the mark. Um, we pray for all of our people, Father, who have went through certain things, Abba Yah. Um, we just pray, Father, that... Uh, you continue to heal our brothers and our sisters, our daughters and our sons, um, that you continue to let them know that even in that time of, of them being alone, and, and I know they felt alone, um, that you have always been with us, Father Yah, that you can heal all wounds by your stripes. We are healed. We don't even think about stripes like that when we talk about being healed, but that's a wound on a lot of people, a lot of our people, male and female. And we just pray, Abba Yah, that... Uh, your healing be upon our people mentally, spiritually, physically, Abiyah, uh, that you let everybody know amongst our people, Abiyah, and amongst, uh, especially amongst those seeking you to know that um, as they've come into this new glorious light, which is you, that that thing is impossible to happen because you don't play about the sons and the daughters of Zion. And even though we may have been, as I said, left alone and, 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 uh, uh, um, left um left um open for lack of a better word we just thank you father y'all for making that path forward um to know that there is truly healing in your wings and there's truly comfort under the shadow of your wing and protection um even if it's protection from our own uh, we pray that you protect all of our children i'll be as we move forward and to teach them the word of y'all that they are always protected against these, these sins of men, this unclean, perverse behavior, which is very prevalent in this land of our captivity. Um, and we just pray that you shield our children all their days, Abiyah, uh, and that you continue to cover them um, to never have to go through such a painful event, such a, um, events that have changed people mentally and, and scarred people for life, Abiyah. Uh, we just pray that you protect our children and never have to do it, and that you heal our people that have been through it and help them to know that it gets better, it gets brighter, um, and that you have us all in, 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 in uh, and that you have us all always, Father Yah, even when we at our worst or at a, and we are alone, that you are the Elohim of our people. You are, are, are you sent the comforter to comfort us from all things, including these things. Um, and we pray that your judgments are righteous upon those who who partake in these kind of acts maliciously, wickedly, um, that whatever you see fit and whatever your judgment be, uh, we trust your judgments to always be righteous. Um, and even if they ain't what we want to be done, uh, that we lean to your word and we will always give you the proper honor, um, glory and praise, esteem um, that is due to the Holy One of Yashara. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Ta-da, I give you a Hallelujah. 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 Everybody have a good night. Hallelujah. Y'all too. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Hello. Hello.